Okay, Master Gardeners, I've been doing some weeding in my own bed right here, and I got a bunch of wild violets out of it, which prompted me to look up some information on wild violets. So the viola species, there were 39 of them in the Peterson's Field Guide. It's a huge family, the viola uh, family. And so the genus viola is the largest one within that whole family. So you either love these guys or you hate them. If you've got turf, you hate them. Because of this glossy kidney shaped leaf, it's very hard to control with an herbicide because that leaf rejects the use of herbicide because it runs off too easily. So you're gonna find when you're using herbicides, you would have to use blends of three different kinds of herbicides. But I don't even recommend that you go into using herbicides to control them in your turf. The best thing's gonna be to dig them, which I'm gonna talk about. So if you're a wildflower lover, then you love these. Some of these are native species and they're beautiful flowers. They're so beautiful that in France, they even candy them and eat them, which is kind of a fascinating idea. Maybe somebody wants to look up a cool recipe on that. But then they're shade lovers and they make rhizomes, which you'll see right here. Here is a typical rhizome. Let me roll it over and see the other side so you can see the stem. But those stems are very resilient. And when you dig them, that's the piece you wanna dig out. They can crawl across the ground and make sprouts from every one of those little nodes under the ground. And so they're pretty easy to dig. I tend to just go in and flick them up. Now, the reason I have so many of them in my bed is last year I didn't control them in my ornamental shrub bed here. And what happens is they make a seed pod and that seed pod can blast. And when it blasts and blows up, you may have seen this occur on your pansies before when you've been down weeding around them and they kind of shoot a little seed and might pop you in the eye. They blast them out and they can go as many as three or four yards away. So that's one of the characteristics of the seed pod. I'm gonna talk another characteristic for seed dispersal besides just that to hissing. But let me talk a little bit more about the flower first. One of my master gardeners asked me this question of what's Kleistogogmus and what's a uh, chasmogonous and those words I was like I don't know what those words are but come to find out when I looked up my violet this one's listed as having both of those pollinator styles during the spring months this guy pollinates by flowers it's an open flower blossom here's the prettier one it's an open flower blossom that the insects can fly into and they are attracted somewhat by the odors because a lot of your violas have nice odors a cool fact about the odors is there's your nose can become desensitized to the smell and it kind of goes like bland in your nose for a couple seconds and then your nose receptor nerve endings become sensitive again so the odor can come and go kind of like kind of reminds me of when i get a uh, what's it called when you get a freeze in your tongue? A brain freeze when you're drinking something really cold and you get a brain freeze. Well, when you're breathing and inhaling some of these, there's sensors in there that'll make your nerve endings kind of freeze up. And they're supposed to, they say that makes it kind of pleasant because you smell the smell and then you don't, and then you smell it again. So pretty cool, fancy idea about their smell. But anyway, open pollinated in the spring. But the survival mechanism that this plant has is it can convert over that open pollinated or style to that cleistogamous system of pollination and it self pollinates. And in the fall months down here at the base, this is not doing it right now, but at the base of this root stem, you'll find these little things that look like bean sprouts at the base here and it has little flowers they're almost underground and they're real white because they're under the mulch or, or under the soil level and they can actually self-pollinate themselves and they produce a viable seed inside there that then can blast out and spread seeds and again you get hundreds of them in your yard so he can reproduce in the spring as well as through the summer and even into the autumn by using these two different pollinator styles pretty amazing so let's get to the neat facts then when i was looking all that up I learned about the ants and the seed dispersal methods that they use. And there's a word called, let me look it up, uh, eliasome appendages that are on top of the seeds. And that makes it desirable to the ants. So the ants will collect the seeds from this wild violet and carry it a couple yards away from your violet plant. And they'll feed that to their babies. And when they're finished feeding that, it's kind of a, a white 
substance, a gooey appendage on the edge of the seed. And they take that and they feed it to their baby ants. And when they're finished, they take this seed and put it in their own little dump compost pile, which is full of other nutritious things that they've dumped out of the anthill. And your seed then can germinate over there. So it's a fascinating system. It's a mutualistic relationship between the ant because the ant benefits because he's feeding his babies and the plant benefits because it's being planted in a nice little compost area. And the cool thing is even Dicentra uses this same method of seed dispersal, this same relationship with ants. ants. And a lot of your spring ephemerals, like your um, hepatica that you've seen me search for and the blood roots that I've looked for and um, let me look at my list here. Trilliums do it, bleeding hearts, hepatica, Dutchman's breeches, wild ginger, and trout lilies. All of those do that same mutualistic relationship. So it's pretty fascinating facts about the violet. So if you don't like them, get out there and just dig them up. But if you in like them, enjoy them and take them home and press them maybe. Of course, I shouldn't have stuck a weapon.